that we grow in our gardens have been bred and selected from native, their native counterparts. And today at the Salt Plains National Wildlife Refuge, we're gonna take a look at some of those native plants along with uh, biologist Ron Shepard, as well as a retired botanist from NWOSU, Paul Neiswanger. We're gonna start here with Ron. Thanks for joining me today. It had my pleasure. Well, there's a couple of plants here that we could take a look at to begin with. Yeah, we have uh, some interesting plants here. First of all, we have a, a milkweed. Uh, the refuge has several species of uh, milkweeds. This particular milkweed right here is your broadleaf uh, milkweed. As you can tell, you can see the milk coming out of the leaves here mm -hmm. where it gets its name. And here, just uh, ahead of the milkweed, we have uh, lemon monarda. Uh, in your gardens, this you could probably uh, looks like your bee balm. Yeah, there's several bee balms. There's in the garden. several monardas or bee balms on the refuge here. This particular one is your lemon monarda. Okay. It's early in the season yet, but later on in the in the season, they actually have more yellow to this plant here. Okay. And these both of these plants are wonderful. Um, sources of nectar for butterflies as well. Yes. So another native plant we have out here is this daisy. This is uh, the fleabane daisy? Yes, this is the fleabane or your fleabane daisy. It's in your sunflower family or your composite mm -hmm. uh, family here. Uh, this uh, fleabane here, it it's, doesn't bloom like this until oh, in the middle of the day when it gets uh, more sun or, or it heats up. Before that, the flowers Before are Before that, like... the, the flowers like that are, are closed. Okay. So. Another pretty flower I saw over here, I could tell this is in the pea family. It has yes, this is your pea family, family. Uh, your flower. legume family. This right here is uh, your small flowered uh, vetch. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty, I don't know, pink is orange. Uh, yeah, to me, it, it, it's a pretty, pretty plant, it pretty is. interesting. Very dainty, but very nice. Is... Uh, Nice this appearance. Is a, your same family as your peas. Okay. Let's see what else we can find here. Okay. Uh, this is a prickly poppy. It has your uh, typical, typical uh, poppy flower and uh, the stems and the leaves and the seed heads are awful prickly. Uh, short spiny thorns on them where they get their name prickly from. It's a very Pokey or I say wicked, <laughs> wicked plant here. You also tend to see um, some non-native species when you're looking around for wildflowers and this one is a, a vetch that was introduced to stabilize um, banks uh, for erosion control. And here's another interesting colorful plant here. This plant is in your uh, mallow family. Uh, it has a poppy uh, type uh, flower head and it's purple so they call it the purple poppy mallow. Mm -hmm. uh, another interesting name for it is wine cup as you can tell. It mm -hmm. has now, a this cup is of wine in it. Certainly a beautiful flower and uh, for those who have visited our studio gardens they might have seen this. We have it growing up in our rock garden. I think uh, water garden enthusiasts might be surprised to find that we have some native lotus here. Yes, here you have the uh, American lotus, not to be confused with your water lily. This is a yellow bloomed uh, plant. And you can see this, the, the ovary or the, the seed pod down in there. Uh, they get quite a bit larger and they'll dry out brown with your, your uh, I don't know, pockets of seeds mm -hmm. in there. Those seed and pods are real seed popular pods. with um, people who make flower arrangements. They yes, like to use yes. those. Yeah, very beautiful flower though. Joining us now is Paul Neiswanger, retired biologist from NWOSU. Well, Paul, um, could you tell me a little bit about some of the trees that grow in this area? Well, yes, where we're standing now, was sand dunes. We think of the salt plains as being lakes, ducks, geese. 
these were sand dunes. They were probably in grass or farmland, but when they shut off the refuge, and these trees took over. And we have two kinds here. This is the the uh, Here's one. the berry one. Silk berry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, silk berry. Some people call it china berry, but it's not china berry at all. Notice where the leaves are attached. There's no little spines. Okay. Now here we have the black locust, where the leaves are attached. A little, two little spines every yes. time. So you, that will hold up every time. You okay. can identify these two species, and there's thousands of them here on these sand hills. Okay. I also see quite a few cottonwoods around us. Lower places. Okay. Water. They need water. They need a lot of water. <clears throat> and if if you were a a farmer or somebody wanting to raise your own posts or your firewood, black locust is the top. Good for firewood. Yes, okay. It grows the fastest and it does what you want it to do. Okay, well let's finish up by looking at a few of the grasses growing All here. Right. All right. All right. Okay, now the dunes area that we're standing on uh, is home to some of our tall grass prairie species. Yes. Yeah. Can you tell me about some of the grasses that we typically find? Yes, you have a <coughs> little blue stem, this one. Okay. It's uh, probably the most common mm -hmm. of the big four of the tall grass prairie. I like to stress that, the big four of the tall grass prairie. That's one of them. And here is another one. The uh, Indian grass. See how they it's not much left of the head out there, but it's enough to tell us it was the Indian grass. Okay. So we have little blue stem and Indian grass. Then switch grass. It had a branching head. See all those branches? Yeah. With seeds out the tips in. The switch grass. And then here is the big biggie of the tall grass prairie. Big blue stem. Big blue stem. Now, of course, the fall is the best time to come oh, and yeah. see these grasses. Oh, yeah. These are last grasses. fall. Yeah. And uh, they're all, if, if you're a grass expert, you go through and pick them out now. But mm -hmm. then that takes, the, and I have a book with you to <laughs> identify everything. Okay. So forth. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining to me, me today and yeah. thank Ron for coming out and showing us some of the beautiful native plants that we have here at the Salt Plains right. Wildlife Refuge. It's been fun. Thanks. <laughs>